Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Souls of Many podcast. I'm your host, Bridget Chapman Lewis. Today, we'll be discussing crime in Chicago. More importantly, I want to give a good snapshot of what the crime looks like in the United States overall. So, um, I want to start by saying that I have a great respect for law-abiding citizens. I have a great respect for law-abiding law enforcement. And I also have the utmost respect for communities at large that are law-abiding. But I wanna tell you from experience, enough is enough. I recently had dinner. I sat down with a friend of mine who lives in a very affluent neighborhood in Chicago. And I used to live uh, not too far from her on the 48th floor of a wonderful building in a wonderful neighborhood. And there was no incident until I left. Um, And I left right before the pandemic, I wanna say. Um, So with that being said, um, the thing that prompted me is our dinner date and our conversation about the crime in Chicago. And her fear of being out after dark, and this is a heavy tourist area, and it's a very affluent area, like I say, Uh, being dark uh, out when it's dark at night and in daylight. She's afraid to meander the streets too long because she hears gunshots at night and she's hearing all these reports of property crime, et cetera, and violent crime. And so it was just daunting our conversation because Um, It wasn't like this uh, months ago. It wasn't like this a little while ago. And I just wonder, you know, um, what the uptick was. So, and why it was. So I started to research and um, it really brought it home for me. But I wanna give a shout out to a person that I've known for quite some time. And his name is T.O. Hardiman. Hey, T.O. Uh, Tio's been uh, a friend of mine for a while, and I got to know him through um, an organization and another friend, a family friend. And uh, Tio has done some amazing work as it relates to crime in the city of Chicago and across the globe. And um, I know that Tio uh, doesn't really, um, you know, he doesn't mince words. And so a lot of people may not like his uh, candor, for lack of better wording, um, but I think it's a very good word to describe uh, Tio um, and, and how he comes across. And um, he used to be the executive director of Cease Fire. And Cease Fire, um, at his helm and his organization, uh, curtailed crime, and it hadn't been curtailed since 1978. That tells you he's a bad boy and he knows what he's doing. Um, so, he, uh, he was accused of something, falsely accused of some domestic um, event or whatever, and he's been exonerated of that. And because of that event, um, he was unable to do some very good works in the city of Chicago. And I think that that's just a shame. I, I, I really do, because we play political football with people's lives, and he's the guy that could have shut it down. And I'm just appalled and concerned that someone hasn't called upon him uh, to do this work. So his organization now is called Violence Interrupters. And I'm not doing um, a, 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 an advertisement for T.O. Um, on Violence Interrupters, but I'm just telling you, he's a really smart guy. He comes from the streets. He's, he got educated. He's an adjunct professor now. And he is the foremost authority on gang activity on violence and crimes. He knows what the heck he's talking about. And he can also balance a budget as far as executive directorship of uh, violence interrupters. So I want to tell you that if you lent some money or you gave some money to the right organizations to help curtail this crime, we'd have it uh, pretty sound by now, by now um, as it relates to curtailing this crime in Chicago. Enough is enough. Now, this is where I was going to co- go with this. Uh, I'm going to circle back to coming into my building late one night after working at the office to maybe 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I'm coming into my office Uh, into my building in the garage and you have to go up the ramp the ramp goes around and it goes up several floors and so there was a group of young guys running down the up ramp 
and I almost hit them. It was about five or six of them. And uh, me, all of 130 pounds, probably soaking wet, uh, I put my car in park. I rolled my window down and I'm like, what the? And I'm going in on these guys. And so I recently talked to a friend and he said, so what were you thinking? And I said, I wasn't. I was just angry that these guys were running down a da an up ramp. They were running down an up ramp. So if you could imagine, um, I could have hit these guys. And then I thought, what the heck would they be running down an up ramp for? And so I go up, I'm around the fifth or sixth floor and um, to ready to park. And I get to the sixth floor and everybody's car was broken into. Stuff was everywhere. They had thrown what they couldn't steal or what they didn't want out on the ground. I was angry angry. So I go up a couple more floors. I park my car. I go in and I go to the security desk as well as um, my um, doorman. And I said, did you guys know this is going on? And they had no clue. How do you not see this going on? How do you not see this going on? Well, they didn't. Uh, neither here nor there. Um, the police were called, they came, and that night on the news, um, I just wondered what the heck was going on. And so I record the news and I cut the news on, it was very late, and they said that these, um, there was like a ring of some sort and they were breaking into all the garages downtown in affluent areas and just taking what they wanted to take. And I thought to myself, this, I was mad. I was mad because if you know what people spend to live in that area and to feel the energy of Chicago and the greatness and the architecture and the food and the restaurants and, you know, people going here and there with their families and just enjoying their life. And then you have like stuff like this happening. Really? And people are paying thousands of dollars to live down there and, and owning things that are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for the view and for the atmosphere, for the energy, for whatever reason, you may purchase um, a home or condo or whatever in that area or rent or whatever you do. Um, it, I just thought it to be outrageous. And so having had dinner with my friend a few years later, I'm like, everybody's scared to come into Chicago. What is going on? It's not that bad. It's, you know, it's this, it's that. And she says to me, are you kidding? She says, Bridget, are you kidding she goes, I'm afraid. I really am. And I'm going to vote the right people in this time because this is bull that this is happening. So this is what I want to do. I want to give you some statistics. And in another podcast, I'm going to circle back to violent crime and guns and all of that. This isn't that podcast. This is specifically for Chicago. I'm going to tell you what I know has happened in Chicago um, more specifically in pocketed areas. And so the Brennan Institute did uh, a finding and a study on what was going on in 2016 and how the crime basically in Chicago was, uh, uh, it was in certain areas. It wasn't all over Chicago like the world thought. It was just in certain area. That was the media hype and sensation. And I don't know why that is, but it just was. Um, and they said that the crime was basically in certain areas. I know those areas. I've not lived in those areas, but in college, I used to party in those areas. Uh, don't tell my parents. But at any rate, um, those areas being Inglewood, south side of Chicago, perhaps Lawndale area on the west side of Chicago, were very problematic. Um, there's no jobs, there's no programs. The after-school programs are a complete and utter joke. And I don't, I don't throw shade to nonprofits that are doing this. It's just not what the kids are interested in. You gotta find out what they're interested in in order for these programs to work. Neither here nor there. Let's get on with this crime and pocketed crime and why it happens. So talking and conversing with my friend Teal, who knows the streets and who comes from that and who's mediated with gang members to call neutrality to some of this violence. Well, years ago, the feds came in 
and they broke up a lot of the rings in Chicago. So they cut the, uh, the head off of the snake. And as such, um, a lot of the organizations became disorganized, if you could believe it or not. So a lot of the gangs were busted up, et cetera, et cetera. So now what you got on the street is uh, pure survival. It's survival of the fittest. There are no jobs, there are no programs. And so you know what you know. You go to what you go to, such as the Italian mob went to what they knew when they got here and they immigrated and they didn't have education, they didn't have jobs, they got into crime. And, uh, you know, then you had the St. Valentine's Ma Day Massacre, killed up a bunch of people, civilians, whatever. They called a truce on families and kids. Okay, so now the gangs aren't organized. They can't call a truce on family and kids. What you've got are individual cells running the streets. Everybody's fighting for territory. So they're shooting one another. That's what's going on. They're shooting one another and they don't care. They don't have any respect. These folks are young folks that don't have respect for human life, let alone their lives. They think that if they make it to 2025, they've done good. They think that if they're not incarcerated by 30 years old, they've made it. They think if they're dead by 35, they did good. How sad is that? How sad is that? That we have a culture like that that we influence a culture like that and we continue to perpetuate cultures like that. No, it's not your fault. No, it's not my fault, but we can do better as a society. We absolutely can. That isn't this podcast either. So what I'm gonna do is tell you that it's survival of the fittest. And so now that survival of the fittest they're looking for something to do outside of their neighborhoods. They got a few nickels to rub together. Let's go downtown and have some fun. So having fun my way may not be having fun their way, et cetera. So now you've got this dynamic where there's folks on your street that are busting into stores, high-end stores, boutiques, whatever, taking and boosting product in the local barber shops, beauty salons, wherever they can boost products. Some of these fools even go online on Facebook and set up market accounts and they sell this stuff and people buy it and no one's paying attention. Is it right? I abhor looting. I abhor people that steal. I once had a very high-end uh, boutique and a ring came through my store and took me for $10,000 in one day in inventory. I felt so violated. I was ready to fight. And I'm telling you, when you get to that point, it's all bets off. So that said, just coming back and landing this plane, um, you don't have the right to violate someone, break into property, do all kind of heinous things and, you know, think you're going to get away with. And it's funny. It is not funny. It is not a good thing. It is not what you're supposed to be doing. It is not what neighborhoods want. It is not. It is not. It is not. So you and your ilk, if that's what you do in your community, we need to police your community too because it's all kind of broke. But please, by all means, don't think you're coming to my community playing games like that because it is not the time of day to be stealing people's identity, to be looting and, 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 and going and doing all kind of things that are in appropriate, grossly inappropriate. Can't stand it. Can't stand it. And if you were here, I would tell you, I can't stand you and that you do that. And you're better than that. You are absolutely better than that. But let's move on with statistics. According to Statista, violent crime in the United States period has gone up. And these are the states that have the most. And this is based on per offenses per 100,000 in population. So you've got the District of Columbia, Alaska, New Mexico, Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana, Missouri, South Carolina, South Dakota, Arizona, Michigan, Montana, Nevada, Oklahoma, Alabama, Texas, California. The list is a little bit longer than that, but this is reported violent crime rate in the United States by state. So let's be clear on Illinois. Chicago is not a state, people. Illinois, Chicago is the most populous area in Illinois, but it is not the state. 
So that said, um, that's, that's, that's where it is, uh, reported violent crime. Let's take a look, according to Statista, uh, violent crime rate in the United States by, um, by state. And this is a little contradictory to the reported violent crime rate in the United States 2020 by state based on life in the district, okay? So based on life in the district is something different than just basic violent crime reporting. So let me go down this list and tell you how we rank. Delaware, really? Delaware, really? Um, relatively small in population, but geez, per 100,000, you've got a rate of 431.9 violent crimes reported. Um, Illinois is next, and Chicago is in Illinois, but all violent crime doesn't happen in Chicago alone. So Delaware, Illinois, Kansas, Colorado, North Carolina, Georgia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Florida, New York, Indiana, West Virginia, Nebraska, North Dakota, Wisconsin, Massachusetts, Ohio, Iowa, Washington State, Oregon, Mississippi, Minnesota, Utah, Kentucky, Hawaii, Idaho, Wyoming, Rhode Island, and the list goes on. But can you see where I'm going with this? Um, violent crime is ridiculous at best. Absolutely ridiculous. What is violent crime? Violent crime is shooting. Um, there are murders, homicides. Um, there's burglary, strong arm robbery, etc., etc. Anything violent breaking into stores um, and people are there. Anything that's violent or people don't have to be there. You just break in a store, that's violent, that's violent. So those are rec that's recorded as violent crime. The Institute for Policy Research at Northwestern um, talks a little bit about uh, violent crime also in Chicago and crime overall in Chicago. And they also go back to 2016, uh, stating that uh, just a handful of neighborhoods, including Austin, Garfield Park, North and South Lawndale, Inglewood, and West Pullman, were the most problematic areas in Chicago. That was localized to those particular areas. If we go back to um, 20, well, we come present to uh, research-wise, 2020, um, where most of the studies were done and dissected, uh, you see violent crime has overall in all the states gone up exponentially. And in states that are red states, uh, you conservative Republicans out there, um, I'm apolitical, but I know that conservative Republicans are always talking about guns and so forth. Guns, the gun of violence is what gives this uptick. Non-gun violence is over here. It's not even on the chart, so to speak, compared to gun violence, okay? So these are several sources that have been cited uh, to let you know what the violent crime is, why it even exists. You know what I'm saying? It's guns primarily and it's in all states that's going to be my next podcast but circling back let's get back to chicago lawndale garfield park um some of the austin area uh inglewood and west pullman very problematic and it's a very young young population and they 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 don't have anything to do and they're doing what they know they're doing what they know, which is to get out, wild out, have fun, fight for territory in their neighborhoods and so forth and so on. When they look to have fun, they come downtown Chicago. They think it's funny if they can punk you and take your cell phone. They think that's funny. You know, you walk down the street and you just got your cell phone in your hand and you're looking down and someone like stick takes your cell phone. Come on, man, come on. You know, that's crazy. Breaking into stores on Michigan Avenue, Oak Street, State Street, etc. Also crazy town. You don't have the right to do that. That's not 
funny to us that live there and that want to come down to, um, to Chicago and bring our families and have fun. Because our fun is being out with the breeze, enjoying a walk on the lakefront, perhaps going to a museum, taking in some coffee at a cafe, or having dinner with our family, or doing some other type of activity. That's our fun. Fun is not taking things and violating people, you know, to the extent that it becomes violent. Um, so I just want to let you know, um, this isn't a Democrat or Republican problem. It's an American problem. It is crazy. It is nuts what's going on. And I'm going to talk about it and really break it down for you factually in um, one of our upcoming episodes, which is uh, uh, crime and gun control because it's out of hand. It is completely out of hand. And it is perpetuating this cycle from Delaware to Alaska to Hawaii to all of the Southern states, as well as the major metropolitan areas. And it always has. And when we pay attention to this, we're gonna get somewhere. But what I wanna tell you about Chicago is this. I'd like to see someone engage violence interrupters and give Tio a shot to curtail this crime and to shut it down. I'd also like to see in Chicago some legislation around this. Imagine this, walking down the street and there are six to 10 people being obnoxious, rude, swearing, jumping all over people in front of people, just being discourteous and just, you know, threatening people if they say anything back to them because they're the tough guy and so forth. I wanna see some more police patrolling, some good old on your feet police patrolling in high tourist areas, okay? I wanna see that because tax dollars are no joke in Illinois and more specifically in Chicago and that is the tax dollar at work, if we can do that. I want to see some legislation around this, and I'm very serious about this. In fact, I'm going to take a sip of water on this. People on their cell phones, I don't want to hear what you had for dinner last night. I don't care about your boyfriend and your argument that's going on. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear you swearing. I don't want to hear you mofo on this. I don't want to hear F that, blah, 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 da, da. Nobody wants to hear that. I don't want to hear it. I think that there should be some legislation around that. Loud cell phone usage, or there should be some cell phone booths that if you need to blow off some steam and you're pissed off at your wife and you're pissed off at your husband, don't be screaming on your cell phone and I'm like two feet ahead of you. I don't want to hear what you have to say. I really don't. I'm not a part of this. Why are you infringing on my, be, my, my good time? I don't want to have a bad time like you're having. And now you're forcing me to have a really bad time because now I'm in the mix of your conversation and I really don't want to be. So I want you to take that and I want you to take it somewhere else and we're gonna be okay. We're gonna be good with that, okay? If that can happen. And it just goes in a noise, noise ordinance and then it needs to be enforced. Um, and so I'd like to see some legislation around loud cell phone talking. I hate that in the airport too, on the trains, on buses, on planes. I hate it, I hate it. That is the curse of a cell phone, is that everyone has access to one and everyone can be as obnoxious or as loud as they want. I don't think you have the right to do that in public. In your house and in your private domain, yes, but in public, absolutely not. I think that if we could curtail that egregious and outrageous behavior in the street, I think that if we can get some more foot patrol there, and I think that if we can get some good programming and areas um, that, um, need necessary programming. And when I say necessary, something to do that youth like to do. And typically youth could be um, anyway coined, in, anywhere coined from 16 years old to 20 something in some categories based on certain statistics. Um, it could be up to 35 years old. Um, and, and that's a stretch for youth, but that's, that's the golden rule of st uh, statistics as it relates to that. Um, 
I'd like to see uh, good programming. And um, I have some suggestions. I know that I have talked to my congressman and my congressman, I'm on the technology committee. And um, there's talk about writing legislation around uh, the programming that I came up with or our firm came up with and our not-for-profit participates in because it is a five point program. There, it's been researched to the extent that we know what youth want because youth has told us what they want. We teach adulting in high school. We have coined that term, adulting, in our specific programming. We teach them how to be adults. Did you know that everybody doesn't know how to be an adult? What that means? You know, paying bills, what a checking account looks like? They don't teach that in school anymore. So we've got this whole program around that to educate students on that entrepreneurship. If you're not going to school, let's get good at something. You're good at something. You've got a gift in something. Let's hone it in. We'll teach you how to become an entrepreneur and to really make a great living for yourself. In addition to that, we've got vocational programs. We've got tech programs that are, I mean, just wonderful stuff where folks are making like $75,000 out of the gate with, with a GED or a high school diploma. But if you take these programs and you get on, you go through the programs and you get certified, you can make that kind of money. And so that's what youth is, are interested in, making a dime, making a dollar, making it happen, you know, as they say, make it rain. Um, and so they're not interested in some stupid, and I have to call it stupid because whoever comes up with this puts no thought into it. Oh, well, let's feed them after school. The uh, statistics say that they're hungry and they, they, they don't get, but they get a meal um, a day and this, that. Okay, that's a given that you'll have snacks at these programs for these kids and perhaps even a meal. But really, you would use all of your resource money towards snacking and eating and just containing the kids and saying, okay, let's have a rap session. Let's talk about this. How about interjecting some SEL, social and emotional learning? That's also what we're big on in our programming and so forth. And I'm not touting our programs. In fact, I haven't even said the name of the not-for-profit. I just want you to know that you got to put some research into what you're doing in order to get people interested in a program. Nobody's going to come to a program where you're going to have some red juice and a sandwich and a bag of chips, first of all, that's not healthy. Um, or the opposite, you're gonna have bean sprouts and oat milk and a salad. Nobody's doing that either. Find out what they want and create healthy programs, mentally and physically, so that we can have fit people on the street. Because right now, we don't have a lot of fit people on the street if they're wilding out to the extent that they are, especially in Chicago. So I'm calling on you, JB, um, to basically be on my team and let's make this happen. I'm calling on you, Lori Lightfoot, the mayor of Chicago, to be on my team and make this happen. I'm also calling on state senators, Speaker of the House, Chris, I'm talking to you as well or I should say, Speaker Welch, all due respect, I'm calling on you to help curtail this and to, to, to rein in everybody that matters to make this happen. Because what I know is that Chicago is one heck of a beautiful city. We've got the architecture, we've got the food, we've got the lake, we've got people, we've got diverse neighborhoods all over the city of Chicago. Where can you go? that if you go two blocks this way, three blocks this way, you're in a totally different place. It's transformative. It will blow your mind, let alone the cuisine and the cultures. Oh, so rich and dynamic. It is amazing. I love the city. I don't live in the city right now, but I wanna get back to the city. I want to have fun in the city of Chicago. It is amazing, amazing. I always said that if the weather was better in Chicago, because my God almighty, and I don't say that in Maine, um, December, after that snowfall and Christmas and everybody's excited about the winter, 
It is cold in January, February, March, and April. It is freezing cold. And when I say freezing cold, not 32 degrees at freezing Fahrenheit temperature, but we get into negative numbers and the wind will cut your face in half. It's cold in Chicago. But I say that because if the weather was like California or Arizona all year round, this city would be incredibly overpopulated because it's one of the most beautiful places on the planet. I just want the violent crime to stop. And I want the youths to stop running amok because they can and they think they're so big and they're so bad or whatever. I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't scared of nobody. Hear me? I'm not afraid of anything or anybody on this planet because I'm not stoked with fear. I never have been and I never will be. And guess what? There's a lot of people out there just like me that's not scared of you because you're not the boogeyman, you know, and you're not in charge of me and my destiny or how I'm gonna live my life and have fun. And I did not, let me make it clear. I didn't leave the city of Chicago because I was scared or because the crime got violent. I left for health reasons. My brother was sick and I had to be his primary caretaker. And he's not in Chicago. He's in the suburb of Chicago and I had to be closer to him and therefore um, I left the city of Chicago because of that um, residential wise, but I go back in a heartbeat in a heartbeat because it's beautiful. It's beautiful, but I want us to get it together. And I think that we can. And so until next time, we'll be talking about gun violence, um, ghost guns. We'll be talking about where these crimes are actually happening. Red states, blue states, we're going to stop this uh, perpetual media cycle of throwing the Democrats against the Republicans and not getting our act together as far as sensible gun legislation. I'm a Second Amendment girl. Most people are sensible enough in this country to know that you have the right to bear arms. But come on now. Come on now. We're out of control now. And we are we have more guns than people here. That makes no sense to me. We have approximately 100 million more guns on the street than there are people. And we'll be talking about that. Until next time, everybody, I'm going to see you when I see you. And I'm going to talk to you about real topics, real news with real people, and real facts. Coming back to you live, the souls of many. This is Bridget. I'm signing off. Have a wonderful wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. Bye now.